Hello again and welcome back to Kerbal Rocket Alchemy. So, Kerbal as this is the prototype of the new version of the Duna Lander. Well, actually it's not exactly a prototype. If this test run is successful, I might use it this very lander for the actual mission. Uh, on that part that <laughs> reverted. Well, I had one test run of this lander. It was a Kerbin testing. <laughs> Basically, I launched it to 100 km altitude and uh, well, 2 km per second velocity. Then the lander braked to 1000 meters per second velocity and I give him level flight at 70 kilometers altitude and then well tried to get it back to the orbit but it reached only 2 kilometers per second and ran out of fuel slightly short of it still it can land with 1 kilometer per second horizontal velocity and large part of Kerbin's gravity yeah. not an up quartile but more than an up uh, for Duna or Moho and therefore uh, this lander seems to be good enough for uh, our purpose Well, with Duna, the situation is that a lander with such characteristics can land without really using the atmosphere for braking. On the other hand, it has enough delta V to safely land after decelerating by sliding into the atmosphere. Something that you don't really do with nuclear powered landers. Yeah. Therefore, it might be slightly overpowered. Oh well, okay. that is capable of some precision landing or by my own hope, maybe. We'll see how it really goes. So now the current test is to send this lander to the moon and check how it behaves on an actual landing and well it's currently launched without crew but there is one Kerbo stuck in the low orbit that we have to rescue and that's a good option for taking a crew member and training a new crew member while testing the craft. Of course, it doesn't have really enough delta V to get to the moon from low Kerbin orbit and then back, so we'll send another craft to use as the mothership. Plus, this uh, lander isn't really certified for Kerbin reentry, especially from the moon. Probably capable if that's done carefully, but but if it's success, I don't want to let it back in Kerbin anyway. So there will be another craft for crew, the, crew return. In this lander will stay in the orbit. Oh well, first of all, let's get our new crew member. Oh, and let's not forget uh, to uh, deal with uh, uh, that module. So, let's just gently push it 
out of the orbit. Okay, the periaps is in, is in the atmosphere. Good. Now stabilize the orbit again. Okay, now the plan. Well, the plan is to send one of the Aurora crafts as the command and service module. Okay, here it goes. One of these crafts. Well, Let's see how well this design fills this particular role. Well, you might want to ask why am I not upgrading the launchpad? Well, you know what? I want to get to Dune without well, upgrading Space Center to the third level. Well, we have mission control at level 3, but it doesn't matter that much. have a bit early inspiration. Well, the scrap is slightly heavier than usual. But that's the point. If you have to reduce the total mass but have a higher impulse engine on the top, you might as well reduce the mass by slightly reducing fuel amount in the lower stages, not the upper stage. Because from here it will perfectly get to orbit and further. On the other hand, it looks like adding this tank didn't add really much because we burned through it quite fast.
Let's stop our movement. This am the lender should be more maneuverable. So we'll dock it. probably have a bit too much monopropellant. What is the impulse? 345? Strange. I told it to be higher. So, I'll have to double check the parameters of all the engines. Since our tanks aren't full, well, we can always do this. That is, reduce the load on the docking port. Just don't forget to refill the lander. Wait a second. We didn't take a scientist. Great. Okay. It's just a test run and uh, we'll have just one shot at the science. Okay. Double check and... Yes. Even without most of the fuel, this docking port shakes a bit. What the impulse? 350. I think that these engines have 380 seconds of specific impulse. Out of science. <laughs> okay, and while our craft is flying to the moon, let's test another. So, what is it? Well, you can probably guess what it is. Let's see how well it really flies since the engine. Okay. It's much aerodynamically stable. Are those select producing that much drive or what? Let's 
yet higher. Well, maybe we should have pitched right down. Well, let's question the apopsis. Oh, pretty quite a scent. Isn't it? Okay. Attempting to circularize. Does it have enough fuel to do it or not? Well, the ascent wasn't the most efficient that I can say right now. Oh well, almost in the orbit. But do we have enough delta V to correct? Well, on the proper ascent we would have gotten in the orbit by now. That's for sure. Yeah. Let's try correcting it like this. Oh well. If we <laughs> get it to, pro to orbit, it will be stranded. Let's just test how it re-enters. So far so good. Well, the re-entry is uh, relatively okay. Could have been much worse. So, it shouldn't be too hot for this craft. Shots are not enough to turn it around. Definitely needs to. We definitely need to slightly improve the aerodynamics of this craft. And to be honest, oh, now it turns around. Okay, but with four tons of that comet module this could be a well turn and uh, a reusable launch vehicle for 100 tons satellites and probes and the moment of truth yes it can land safely that's good At least the proof of concept is done. Oh, 
let's see. Hmm. Yeah, not great recovery, but we landed on wrong side of the planet. The actual wars, well, slightly over 20,000. Yeah, let's compare it to the cost of the craft itself. So we almost got something that would result in, well, just a few thousand for a flip to orbit and back. Yeah. Just a few thousand on the spent on the fuel and about 20,000 of recovery. <laughs> oh well, you'll need to make some adjustments, but I think this is enough for now. So we'll end this episode here and uh, see you next time. Bye!